This is a review of the Telstra 5G home modem. Under the modem, we have the power indicator, 5G indicator, mobile signal indicator, Wi Fi indicator, internet indicator, and phone indicator. On the bottom, you have the, your login details for how to log into the modem, plus your Wi Fi name and password. Back of the modem, there's a phone port, on off button, USB 3 port, a LAN or WAN port, it'll automatically detect whether it's connected to an internet source or connected to a device that requires internet. And you also have four 1 gigabit LAN ports, making a total of five LAN ports. The SIM is located behind this panel. There's a reset button, WPS button, Wi-Fi wi button for turning the Wi-Fi on or off, and two sockets for connecting that external aerial. To set the modem up, just supply power and turn it on. In the box you get a uh, instruction booklet, a safety and health information pamphlet, and a fridge magnet with the Wi-Fi details on it. This takes about two minutes, so I've speeded this section up. Signal light blinks blue to indicate it's trying to connect, and then turns green. Finally, the internet light turns green, indicating the modem is connected to the network. I'll now do some performance testing. In this first test, the Wi-Fi coverage of the modem was plotted using the Telstra Home Dashboard app. The map was then compared with two earlier Telstra modems maps. These maps indicate the modem has better Wi-Fi coverage. The next test measures the Wi-Fi link speed of the modem, both close to the modem and in the room with the worst Wi-Fi coverage. The speeds were then compared with the Arcadian version of the Telstra Smart Modem Generation 2. The tests indicate there's very little difference in speed between the modems on the 5 GHz Wi-Fi band and the AW1000 was slightly faster on the 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi band. The speeds will vary greatly depending on the Wi-Fi capabilities of the device used. The Samsung Galaxy S9 was used for measuring the speed. The next test measures the Wi-Fi speed through a brick wall close to the modem and at 10 meters, 20 meters, 30 meters, 40 meters and 50 meters from the modem. A Samsung Galaxy S9 was used for the first set of results. A Samsung Galaxy A6 tablet was used for the next set of results. The actual 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi speed of the tablet was significantly lower than those of the S9. Close to the modem, the speed was only a quarter that of the S9. 5 GHz speed of the tablet is even slower than the tablet's or the S9's 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi speed. The next test measures the internet speed of a Wi-Fi device close to the modem and in a room with the poorest Wi-Fi coverage. The testing device was a Galaxy S9. Next graph is of the Wi-Fi internet speed over time. Over the 36 hour period, download speed varied from 440 megabits per second maximum to 211 megabits per second minimum. The upload speed varied between 35 megabits per second maximum to 17 megabits per second minimum. All the tests had zero packet loss 
except the test with the maximum speed. On that test, the packet loss was 8.4%. Next, I will show some of the settings that are available in the modem's GUI. The LAN IP can be changed. There is also a selection of DNS servers to choose from. The modem can be converted into a router with its 5G radio turned off and the LAN port connected to an internet source. These are the modem's 5G settings. The modem has one of the easiest to use parental time scheduling controls I have seen on any modem or router. There is also URL blocking which I have been able to successfully block any sites with. The modem only supports two dynamic DNS providers, DYNDNSorg and TZO.com. DMZ is not supported in 5G mode. Port forwarding is also not supported in 5G mode. Remote management is another function that does not work in 5G mode. The modem has no option for setting its time zone to Northern Territory, South Australia or Western Australia. The modem has the option for backing up and restoring modem settings. The modem can also be factory set or rebooted from the graphic user interface. USB hubs can be connected to the modem's USB port. As well as supporting USB drives, the modem also supports USB printers. The modem has Mac filtering settings for wireless devices. The modem also has settings for Wi-Fi scheduling. Most of my Wi-Fi devices don't support the high internet speed. Some of the Wi-Fi devices have a slower Wi-Fi speed when connected to the 5G modem's Wi-Fi than when they were connected to the FTN modem's Wi-Fi. And most of my security cameras won't work because the Telstra 5G service does not support servers. So although the Telstra 5G service is much faster than my old 48 megabits per second FTN service, I will be returning the modem at the end of the month's free trial period.